Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is the Wix online meeting 149, getting close to that round number of 150. I don't know why that sounds interesting, but it does. This is the end of April. Let's go jump in. This is going to be a short meeting for those of you that aren't here with us right now. It's being recorded for everybody that is with us right here, right now. That namely is Bob and Sean. we got a quiet group. We're going to do a triage and a quick pull request review because someone poked us on Twitter and said, hey, could you please review this before your next meeting in two weeks? But it turns out that was just in two days, so here we are. We'll do that real quick, and then if Bob and Sean have any questions, we'll talk about that. We're starting a little late because we were just talking about some Wix 4 mechanics with the way that all the NuGet packages were being stored and not stored because AppBear is reducing their artifact storage and things like that. So we don't have any answers there, but uh, we'll talk about it. I don't know, maybe at the end of this meeting and maybe a little bit more. All right, let's go to triage and PR review to get this thing going. Bob, you ready? I am ready. All right, here we go. GitHub, I have started pushing the button at the top that says, hey, you know, he's not supported anymore. I'm like, yeah, but it keeps working great. That's all I care about right now. Um, because IE shares through Skype well. Um, light fails with error about not finding a directory. There is something wrong here just in the world. Um, yeah, it, and obviously this yeah generally works because I think if you couldn't link, we would probably have heard about it. Yeah, that, that hash is where the backslash should be, and you'll notice um, up, uh, up top they're using bash or something, some equivalent. Um, so I guess my first thing would be, hey, does it work in cmd.exe or PowerShell? Yeah, I think this one we should be like, look, this is every code path that goes through. This is generally works. Can you try downloading the PDBs and debugging and seeing what's going on? Because we've never seen this reproduce. I don't know if PDBs are going to be useful here. Well, they'll be able to get the whole source code. Like, the whole debug, that's it. They'll be able to look. They should be able to put the exception and land right in this in their code if this is happening. Um, yeah, that's true. I mean, it's, it's not like go set a breakpoint on this line of code. Right? Well, it, it's going to yeah, be. Sorry, that, just wait. That's my the, point. Set the exceptions. The, wait for it. Go. Yeah. The the problem is it's in cabbing, which is you know um, atypical. Oh, it's in the native code. Yeah. Well, I think you can go look and see if that folder really is there. Essentially, you just need a little bit more data of what's going on here. Cause I don't know how this is not working. Yeah, well, I mean, it's it's obviously environment specific, so I'll I'll mention Bash and suggest the PDBs. Yep, and just be like, we have way too many people this is working for. There's something unusual in this particular situation. Yep, agreed. This one was interesting. Wix Quite Exec incorrectly assumes Unicode output if the first red, first red, if first red is a single byte. Yeah, okay. I don't know why it's not so hard to parse. Um, so, yeah, so if you write a single character, I see, so it only, it says we should only check after we've read two bytes. Yeah, that seems somewhat reasonable. Although I'm trying to picture a scenario where you write a single byte and then it gets flushed. The I'm just like any any kind of normal command line processing isn't going to do this. I mean, it's not. It's it's contrived. It's not you know ridiculous, but it's pretty contrived. Oh, I see. So they're writing an ANSI, and they write one character. Yeah, no, that's bug. That's a bug. Yeah. Cool. We should fix that in Wix4. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, let's put that in 4 and make sure we don't lose it. That's pretty good. Yeah, that, that's that's a bug. If you write one character... Yeah. If you write a one character output, 
for whatever reason. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Not many people do that. That's why this code has <laughs> yeah. been a problem in a very long time. Yeah, that's quite exact, which has been around for a while. And this is in Qt exec, okay? This isn't even yeah. inside um, D at all. So that's interesting. So, all right. Yeah, interesting. Um, so, had someone asking to look at this pull request, which is essentially um, trying to fix this issue where um, the new Wix 4 ID is an object, and so sometimes this gets missed. Um, and I think the correct answer is to put the ID up here, correct? I think so. That's the Sorry, right up where? Oh, uh, part, create the ID is part of the raw object. Yes, right not to set this string here, because when you create the ID as part of the row object, it ends up um, getting, well, it ends up getting encoded better or something. It's associated, the ID yeah. is associated with the actual row. Rather than not just string. It's, it's string, yeah. Yep. <clears throat> so, all right, I'll leave that comment on this, um, and they can decide if they want to. Now, this is in the Wix4 repo, correct? Yep, and I don't think util's moved yet, so if they get this done soon, it'll get fixed. If they don't, oh, then it'll get done soon. I didn't even notice that was in Judal extension. Excellent. Yep. So if they do this soon, they don't have to deal with it. And we don't have to deal with it. It'll just get moved. And if they don't, then, well, then it'll get fixed. I'm not too worried about it. There is a bug open on this. I think it's even assigned to me in Fort. Yeah. So yeah, I, the bug. I think so I, I opened one at some point as well. Yeah. So I, the, there are these bugs, they don't concern me. I was like, hey, that's great that someone tried to fix it. Uh, they, I totally see why they fixed it this way. It's not the correct way to fix it, that's okay. Well, I'll give them the feedback. If they want to try to fix it again, we'll do it, and then we can roll up build from there, so. Cool. Um, all right. I think that's true Azure Pure here. I knew that was gonna go fast. Um, Help that we stop, started 15 minutes late talking about this changes with, um, at Vair. So we'll just pick up. Of course, up the nice thing is that it. the recording people don't even know that we started late. Yeah, well, it shows up in the, the start time whenever I. Oh, it does, doesn't it? Yeah, okay. So that's why I, I, I call it out when it's like, what are they doing for 15 minutes? It's like, was Rob eating breakfast again? I was like, yes, I was eating breakfast, but it was actually before the time slot. Because um, Sean can attest that I was actually on and talking to him by 9 30. Um, anyway. Um, so the whole app are not storing the NuGet packages for all of our intermediate builds because they're going to start dumping packages every three months for free plans, which is a reasonable thing for them to do. I always thought it was pretty amazing that they were saving everything anyway. Yeah, storage isn't expensive or anything, but, you know, it adds up. Yeah, at some point you'd be like, yeah, why are you storing all this stuff? So we do need to find a different place to store the NuGet packages. Um so one answer might be to try to go move to my git or to use my git instead um, and see if that will store all of the little the micro repos repositories and Bob was asking about how do we do the PDBs and all that stuff in the source things for it well even from just the binaries perspective I mean the micro repos are going to have individually smaller NuGet packages, but if you look at like, you know, a typical Wix 3 release, it's like 30, 32 megs, something like that, just for the binaries. Um, and the micro repos, again, are going to change things, not only because they'll have smaller individual packages, but also because they won't all build at the same time. Yeah, so but where I, I guess where I'm, where I'm going is we still have you know, we still have a certain amount of, of data that we're gonna that we're gonna produce it every time we build one of the repos. So I'm just wondering if like, you know, the the limit on my get for the open source accounts is one gig. Um oh, one gig. You know, one of the nice things theoretically about NuGet is that, you know, oh well we're never gonna get rid of anything. So you, it's it's perfectly reliable unlike um you know random SourceForge downloads or whatever in hmm. the past, but if we have, you know, if one gig is kind of a strict limit. 
you know, over the course of you know, a year or two or whatever. Yeah, but we only need like the last two or three of each. I mean, honestly, the last one of any of the NuGet packages. Um, well, I get um, yeah, except yeah, but the, I mean, this is a problem that we've run into in in you know prior you know prior uh, development cycles, right? Where you know we encourage people to update, but you know there's nothing we can do to force it. And then, you know, people routinely come back and say, uh, oh, where's your, you know, random build from four months ago? It's like, well, it, it scrolled off. No, we, uh, so each individual NuGet package will publish its parts, but then there will have to be an aggregation that is whenever we do a release that will hold on to everything still. So um, yeah, sure. To solve the problem that you're discussing there, there will have to be an aggregate, all of the PDBs, all of the binaries release for every time we do a release. That'll have to be done automatically. Well, so, sorry, so when you say release, you're are you talking about a milestone release or? No, any random, any, build. any random build that we release. Okay. Well, if we do that, we're going to explode our storage requirements. Well, not any more than we do today. Cause, I mean, we do that today. Well, that sure. goes up on the, I mean, when, when we post the build to the releases, that's up on, you know, the Fire Giant provided storage. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, that's, what is it? That's like uh, 80, 90 meg a release or something like that? I forget. Actually, I don't know how big the debug.zip is anymore. Um, um, 34 point, well, 34, in decimal, 34 megs, 47 megs, and 28 megs for the bundle. So each one is, it's, each one's about 110 megs. 110. All right, so I was saying about 90, but okay, 110. So, I mean, that's what we're storing per release today, um, mm -hmm. and I, I don't expect that will get smaller. No. Well, actually, it might because we are we're no longer building all the the same number of native SDKs. Yeah, the native SDKs yeah. can actually shrink it quite a bit um, because they are expensive. They're actually more expensive than anything else. Yes. Um, although we are going to be picking up the .NET Core runtime. Yeah, that's true. Which will give us 20 meg or something like that. Yep. Um, although I haven't checked 2.1 to see what it's at these days. Um, yeah, but I mean, we're just that's just going to be part of you know the release will have all that and then have all the PDBs um, for that release. I, I think we're just going to have to keep it all. I I don't think we can rely on the micro repos for keeping all the PDBs. I think we're going to have to aggregate them into a single group. Okay. A sure. single thing for every release. And that will not be a, um, well, and then we get to decide, um, we'll obviously release the bundle and such to the release site, our release site. For the Wix NuGet package, we'll put it into, we'll have to decide how many builds we put in the NuGet, um, mm -hmm. .org. I don't know how many we should. Um, we just said we haven't talked about that problem yet. And if we put yeah. NuGet, all the builds in NuGet.org, then we could maybe put the symbols there too. Right. Um, well, so last we spoke about this issue, which has been a while, um, NuGet.org wasn't exactly signing up for you know, doing every single release. Yeah. Except, I, I, but I see that they, you know, they, they do have. Um, yeah, some people do it. Some people don't. Yeah, and you know, what are pre I mean, so it's kind of like we have to decide what we want to do there. Yeah, um, yeah. Because I'm thinking this is the advantage of, uh, <laughs> perhaps the only advantage of having so much reliance on, you know, an external source for your for your libraries and such, is that you can. During development, especially, automatically roll onto you know the latest compatible version, theoretically. Yeah, theoretically. Um, yeah, like I said, perhaps the only advantage. Um, but that is an advantage during development, mostly. Except we don't always guarantee you know, perfect API compatibility until we. No, ship, that, but, but you shouldn't be building on a developmental build. I mean, just, and if you are, I'm sorry. We just we can't. We're not spending that much time on this problem. It's just 
Yeah, agreed, agreed. But it's, it's, <laughs> it's, if 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 we were to publish, I, I'm looking. Part of the advantages of of you know publishing everything, every build. Well, the advantage, one advantage is that you know you would automatically roll forward. Um, but otherwise, I'm like, especially if we are doing these aggregate releases, we're going to run. I mean, one gig is just not a lot of space. Um, if uh, if we're doing the aggregate packages for what every release, no, they, 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 uh, the uh, aggregate package would not be able to go to a to one of these feeds. To, to a private, it'd have to go to nougat.org. We won't have the space ever other places. Okay. Well, I mean, should we then just switch the conversation over, sh you know, to whether we ship every build to nougat.org? Um. Yeah. And I. I. I just. I don't see. I don't see how it works. The the, the idea that we're going to lose um, builds, uh, perhaps quickly, off of something like my get from one. One gig, it's kind of like uh, that. That almost takes away your, you know, the advantage of of having external uh, external sources for for your tools. On the other hand, it's like you know, it starts to add up, you know, price wise to have mygit.org post more than more than that. So this this goes back to the we could then um, publish the NuGet packages to um, our um, Azure Storage for Fire Giant provides um, and continue to do our our stuff there. Um, I haven't I haven't looked at the work to host a my get a uh, NuGet feed for the new right. stuff, but I know there are tools out there that make that not horrible. Um, so that's another option, but that just requires more work to basically create, you know, a private. Uh, it's a it's essentially a MyGit without any of the cost problems, without any of the storage, you know, problems. Well, and then we'll we can are you know we can roll off the back end, you know, we'll have more direct access to being able to kill off bits and so on and so forth. So yeah. Um, I don't don't know. That one's the most work. Yeah, yeah. And you know, it might be kind of silly to put in a bunch of work just to avoid, you know, twenty five bucks a month. Um, although twenty five bucks a month only gives you what two gig? That's not gonna. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> yeah, true, true. That's yeah, that's it. It's actually four, oh. which is a little better, but. It's so. It, it's actually really interesting because that the storage is the storage is really cheap. I'm kind of surprised that's how they uh, um, do it. Yeah. Well, but yeah. It, interestingly, Jacob, there's there's no extra cost based on egress, which actually starts to add up pretty quickly. Well, they're charging so much for the storage that. Well, yeah. Maybe egress is covered. Make up for it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, actually, that that could be their, you know, um, total storage is somehow an indicator of potential egress. I guess. But it's pretty bad because really it just, you know, if, if all you want it for is, you know, his, history, then that's pretty expensive. Well, you know, I mean, one option would be just to publish the NuGet package to our release storage that we already have without having all the feed stuff on it. That'll be straightforward. And if yeah. people want that, they'll just have to download the NuGet package and put it in their own feed um, manually. I'm not sure that's horrible for developmental build. It basically says, yeah, this isn't that easy on purpose, right? Right. I mean, I know we want people to take them regularly, but... It's not really a thing that you should be putting in a production space. So yeah, you know, we'll just keep the releases here. That whole system will continue to work as it does, and then occasionally we will post one of those NuGet packages over to NuGet.org at our normal, you know, release schedule, whatever that is. Right. Right. 
our the milestones, builds. milestone builds going right. to get that org. Right. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, Yeah. Uh, it's worth thinking about. I mean, personally, I don't know that I... It, I guess part of the issue is it's just really, really easy if everything's on NuGet. Because, like, Jacob, I think there... With that, you could you could address it already, right? There are... You can tag something as pre-release on NuGet, I believe. Or is that just part of Semver? I think it's part of Semver. Okay. Which is a pain in the ass for us. Yeah, true. I really hate Semver. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. This might require more research to see what other people are doing. Well, the problems are a little bit different from what I've seen other people do. I mean, most people are just like, hey, here's my assembly. Here's my NuGet package. I'm done. Right? It's no big deal. They're not a whole tool chain. There aren't many tool chains out there, I guess, is what it comes down to. Um, and certainly aren't many that are as um, interesting as the way the tool set is that aren't built into Visual Studio. <laughs> um, so it's just we're a little different in that way. Although, you know, where are NuGet packages? So I'm just I'm thinking through this a little bit. Our our NuGet packages over time uh that assume yeah, sorry. I was assuming I could get the extensions into their separate NuGet packages, but that's not necessarily gonna happen in Wix four. That is not a solved problem. Although it's really the extensions aren't that big. That's not the problem. What's big in the release? The native yeah. the native yeah. SKS. Well, those will not ship as part of the tool set anymore. Those will be separate NuGet packages. Right. So that'll get smaller, and they update less often, generally. Right. We don't change dutl wcadl nearly as much um, no. as the other things. So those will up. So those will all come out and all their different flavors will come out and be released less often. Um, sorry, I'm not sure what you mean by come out. Sorry, sorry but not. They'll get built less often. In the aggregate? Yeah, and they, well, they, yeah, they, they will be pulled out of the aggregate. So then, sorry, what's the aggregate? Then? Sorry, the, at least the NuGet package. The, the NuGet package will only be the tools, the core tool set in the end. Um, the bundle may continue everything, but the bundle's not really a, an, an issue because the bundle will only get yeah, put into bundle, place. Right. So the bundle's like no different than today. That's very straightforward, yeah. understood problem. Yay. Um, it's the new NuGet package that we release, but that's only the core tools and extent. I mean, that's the that's the the build tools and the individual SDKs will become as, will be pushed out into their own NuGet packages. Uh, which don't up, which don't update as often. True. Which means you're generally gonna be able to pull them from NuGet proper. Like, I, we won't take a latest build of them. There won't be many latest builds with them in it. Um, we'll have to figure out what that means, you know, because we don't want to be copying the same bits up all the time. Yeah, and and, and therefore you. <laughs> You've now segued into the, the next thing, which is how do you, we how do we version quote unquote Wix four when it's you know a dozen micro repos. Well, it's like, not the micro so micro repos are less of the issue. It's whatever the final released bits are. Sorry, that the ag but how many aggregates are there? Yeah, right, 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 exactly. That's the the problem is you know in a mono repo. What you build is what you build and what you ship, and you know that's a one to one uh, with the micro repos and with with specifically with the li the native libraries that don't update as often you know what what does it mean what does it mean you know what does it mean to ship deal 
well, I'm I'm going to say a lot of these things are stuff we can just, you know, there's nothing magical. It's like the latest deal is what goes into the Wix 4 bundle, for example. There's not a lot of, <sighs> there doesn't need to be a lot of, of you know, release uh, pageantry around a lot of, um, a lot of the micro repos. And the native SDK is probably the best example. Um, all of those individual libraries, it's like, yeah, they, they don't update very often and, you know, theoretically they're only getting better. They don't go through the same destabilization cycle that the core tool set goes under, you know, in a major release. So, fine, Deedle. Deedle can go up a NuGet for every build, is I guess where I'm going to. Yeah, that's, I was just kind of thinking, same with WCA, it'll just be like, yep. yeah, these are good. Yeah. Um, but then that cuts out, like, that's our biggest space usage. Absolutely it is. Um, and then you're just, down to the extensions. Not as far as space. So, just looking at, at Wix 11, um, the core tool set is 14 megs. The SDK, 84. God. So, core, sorry, core tool set plus all extensions. It's how much 14, again? 14, 14 megs. It'll be bigger than that because we're going to carry the core with us now, but yeah. Yeah. It'll be but closer to 30. Certainly the, certainly the libraries. The, the libraries, um, yeah, I remember each library is at least a meg, just from you know overhead. Deedle is the biggest at about four megs a piece, but of of the eighty four megs in the SDK, eighty two and a half uh, come from the native static libraries. What else is there? Managed library, which is yeah, some managed stuff. The headers. No, the managed. No, sorry. What what other packages are there then? There's the managed SDK. No, that that's the SDK. That's that's the native yeah. SDK. Native SDK is basically is the yeah the header files and the libs, right? Yep. So that's 82 megs. The rest of it is the managed SDK. Which is oh, is that all in the same MSI? But they're separate. Okay. Managed? Managed is in one MSI. Native are in separate per version. Got it. Got it. Right. Okay. Good. <laughs> per version. Uh, uh, yeah. The managed SDK will just be a new as well, and it doesn't change at all. Um, yes. Yeah. Um, well, yeah. Yeah. So we have to solve some other issues there, like Part of what shows up in this directory is um, the MBA, MBA host stuff. Okay, yeah, we'll solve that. So we have to solve that, but yeah, otherwise it's you know DTF, which will be straight. For, that's already been solved essentially. Yep. Those packages have been built; they're not being published yet because they're not done. But that's generally a good spot. Yeah, this is this isn't as nearly as bad as I was thinking it was. Yeah, no, me either. The, the, the reality of it big. isn't that bad. No, um, it's not. And if we could ever get to the point where the extensions live as NuGet packages only, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. then, yeah, you end up with... Yeah, it's interesting. You end up with a lot. So really, it's going to be the core tool set that's going to be of you know, a non-trivial size mm -hmm. because of the .NET Core runtime mm -hmm. and because it iterates. It's going to iterate quickly. But it's not going to... But the things that are going to be up in, like, a MyGit feed for that are all the individual parts, which are all very small. Um, sorry, you're saying... Extensions, the core package, the, the core native package... You know, the the Wix native .dll, 
um, those kinds of packages would all be up in the NuGet. Those would be the ones that would be churning in NuGet more regularly. Honestly, probably more likely the core package because we haven't had a lot of extensions churning, right? Because all of those then get aggregated into a single bundle or and then a single NuGet package, right? So all those the micro repros NuGet packages get spun into um, smaller packages. So into the aggregate packages. Oh, and those are the things oh. that'll be changing more regularly in a a development only NuGet space, right? Like there's the Wix toolset dot core NuGet package today that contains like Wix.dll and and the build tasks and that kind of stuff that then gets passed off over to the setup project. Um, so whenever you build and modify the Wix.dll or the Wix.exe or the Wix toolset.core.dll, um, those are the kinds of things that will get published to the private NuGet feed, wherever that is, right, for development purposes only, like for our, for Wix development purposes only, those packages. Well, that could be still out there, right, because we're only doing this. Well, no, because they need to last for longer than three months, maybe. If we don't do a bill for three months, then suddenly you end up with nothing. <laughs> you, you'll you lose whatever your last... You need your last known good build, right? Or your last build. And that Vayer will never be able to hold the last known good build because time will eat everything. So you have to say, here was our, our last build was published, you know, on today's date. And you put that up in my Git or wherever we put it so that if we don't do a build for six months it's still there and you can still get it, you know, especially in the case of extensions, right? Because each extension will be a NuGet package that'll live up in the this private NuGet space, right? And it needs to last because we might not have an extension for years, given the way they've gone now. But they will always get pulled down whenever you do an aggregate build of the bundle or the NuGet, um, or, the, right. or the Wix right. NuGet package, right? So you can't put, that's the problem that AppVair is creating here for us, is that we can't just use AppVair and say, here, just store our last one forever. If we could get NuGet to say, or sorry, if we can get AppVair, and maybe this is the thing we bring up with them, it's like, hey, we totally get your three months things. How about you do um, three, no package longer than three months or the top three packages in your my, in your NuGet feed, yeah. or, or even maybe the top one, right? Because we could probably live yeah. with the top one. It just basically means that AppVayer cannot store anything more than the latest build. And like, that's fine, because yeah. if we want to keep yeah. more than that, we have to aggregate it somewhere else. Yeah. So essentially, don't empty the NuGet feed. And maybe that's the follow-up with AppVayer. And, and I'll do that. I will take that. I'll follow up with AppVayer saying, hey, totally understand your space thing. Can you make your policy three months and not not zero, basically right. never yeah, empty yeah. the feed completely. Yep. Okay. That would be perfect. Then we don't yeah. worry about anything. Okay. Right. Because an alternative there, if we don't need to, because essentially what what you're describing is the um, <laughs> we're using we're uh, using and possibly abusing NuGet as you know uh, a file share, right? Yes. It's just it's to it's to move bits around. Yes. So worst case, we could do that with just plain Azure storage. It just we would lose the tooling around. Yes, and being able to pull stuff out of NuGet. And that's where I fall back to the yeah. Uh, now we have to do our own thing, which I don't really feel like doing. But well, I was saying we don't need for that. We don't need a NuGet feed if all we care about is there must be you know the last build. Yeah, but then then we have to redo our build systems yeah. so that can find things and download them, which is essentially. The world is the the Windows world is a side that's NuGet, except the C plus plus guys are trying to create their own thing. But that's whatever. Um, that's C plus plus. Yeah, and it's not what we want anyway. So um, that would work. Should work. Not bad. I, I don't want us. I, I don't want us to spend time on, you know, stupid stuff like this. Especially stuff that should be shared. Hmm. What if that foundation?
got something there. Sean is scary quiet today. Yeah. Sean's like, this is not my problem. I'm trying not to get involved. Because <laughs> <laughs> you know what happens. Someone ends up volunteering or being volunteered. Oh, no, I guess it's future problems. We haven't even separated everything yet. Yeah, I hear you, but we have to. It could be bad it, it, future problems. <laughs> and it's also not far future problems. No. It's near future problems. Yeah. I, I, could, I could finally, <laughs> literally, my, my clock on my, all these projects are running out, so they all, they will be done, because they have to be done, kind of thing, in the next month or so. So life will get back to more normal, which means can have some free time for doing Wix stuff again, beyond the bare minimum here. Um, and this app here, I think, just came out this morning. So, uh, I agree with that. Sean is definitely providing value. <laughs> uh, it's one of the reasons we tapped in to balance out the crazy of Bob and I. Um, hey. Yeah, okay, that's right. I was going to say... <laughs> <laughs> you could take offense to that, but it's truth. Um, yeah. All right. I, I, I think we have a bunch of different things here. Sean's not completely wrong. This is a future problem. I think we just need to go experiment a little bit more with it to see how it turns out. Um, yeah, because the, the problem with AppVare, whenever they pull the trigger on this, is that, well, I guess we have three months, um, except the current builds are, well, a couple of them, because I've, I've done some work that triggered a build. Uh, but all the other repos are already older than three months. Mm -hmm. So we yeah. have to, They're we essentially have to, we'd have to force a build of every micro repo um, at least once every three months. Um, so, yeah, and that's bad because then all the versions are changing. Oh, no, no. Yeah, no. <laughs> We, yeah, we'd have to figure and, out. Either, and with the Git history, to, with the way that we're doing Git history, the, the build numbers would be the same. And I don't know. Right, what, right. We'd have to, we'd have to oh, push no. something. No. This, this is just out of bulk. This is like, this is all anti-patterns here. Like, what you just described is a whole bunch of, yeah, don't do that. Um, I'm going to, let's, I'll add a file to the repo that says, you know, touch me to force a build. And then you just, <laughs> oh, you know, God. add a comment. Commit, push, get a build. Done. Oh, God, I don't want to talk about signing, which is another uh, thing we'll have to look at for NuGet. Um, there's a minor thread when they introduced uh, their signing stuff mm -hmm. that unsigned stuff is now going to, you know, uh, carry the width of something you don't want to use. Yeah, but we don't have to sign our aggregate build. That's like only a setup project sign problem. That's not everybody. Not every not every micro thing has to sign. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I mostly agree. Except again, I think it's more of a. It, it, I think it depends on how they're how they're going to to do the UI. Um, no, it's only for the things that we end up putting in NuGet, so. Well, yeah. So that means just just aggregate packages. I think we're going to be okay. I'm, I think we're going to be okay on that one. Okay. Yeah, Blair. I, I. That's the exact thing I'd found before. I remember that from a very long time ago. It's just, and, and we would do that. If, if push comes to shove, we'll, we'll look at doing, you know, we'll look at hosting NuGet on, you know, the Fire Giant servers, because we can do that. It's just more work than I, I would like to have to do if we can come up with something else around um, to do that. So, 
but if you sign it's different, but can be the same binary version. Yeah. So I need digital same DLL. Oh, I <laughs> I see signing and same version and things like that. So yeah. All right. Well, that was fun conversation. Um, I probably should have put that at the agenda, except. No, oh, it got added when the, before we even started the meeting. Just before we started the go. meeting, I got the email, so there, I couldn't put in the engine. Okay, I feel less bad about that. Uh, hey, that was a questions and comments thing that people could follow up on this. Um, so, all right, I think we're good. We'll have some interesting problems when we get back to four. Uh, as I mentioned, I have a deadline that I've been working towards um, myself for June, which has been sucking up a lot of time this year, very big project that we're finishing up. So that's why I've been less available beyond <laughs> doing these things, um, and basically the bare minimum. And hopefully I'll get back to having a little bit more of my free time after June. And there'll be a bit of backlog to dig out, but it'll be better. So um, on that note, looking forward to the future and tackling some of these things that we just discussed today. I'm very excited about that. Um, you guys have a good one. Talk to you in two weeks again. So that'll be June. Uh, 150 will be the first, uh, will be a meeting in June. Oh, wait, Jake's writing a book here. I'll wait a second. Um, John, Bob, you have anything else? I assume you guys are all good. I've spoken. My piece. Nope. Could manage the process of the nougat feed outside the build feed. Yeah, we could do all that. We'll see what happens there. All right. Two weeks from now, we will uh, be here again, talking about again. Hopefully, we have uh, as few issues as we did today, and we'll roll on right. from there. Yeah. All right. Later, peoples. Bye.